24 minutes. Fran Triplett, 3616 Northwood Drive. <clears throat> Recently, Mayor Wharton spoke to Commercial Appeal. He stated, and I quote, the facts have been distorted or ignored in what he calls, and I quote again, an emotionally charged debate. He's right about one thing, I'm emotionally charged. So emotionally charged that I've spent the past five to six weeks, most days and most nights, talking with people, because see, I really care about people, about how this will affect them, looking, understanding the Memphis Charter, which I knew nothing about until now, looking at and learning about the budget, which there again, I knew nothing about until now. All of us, employees, spouses, families, friends, and citizens, have pled our case of how devastating your decision will affect all of us. Very few on the city council, as a matter of fact, I can count two, have actually taken the time to sit down, listen to what we have to say. Listen to how this is gonna affect our families, our friends, everybody. And yes, like others, I too have a story of what my husband has dedicated to this city and each of you, and the mayor himself. I won't spend much time on that, but just so you know a little bit about me and my family. My husband has spent 21 years serving this city, each of you and all of us. He went down on his police motorcycle, almost lost his leg, received two rods, nine screws, and a permanent injury. He will always hurt, he will never walk again the same, but yet he decided to stay, to serve y'all, to serve the city because he loved his job. He has sacrificed holidays, birthdays, Christmas. He has been shot at. He had to shoot someone. Cussed at, spit on, and treated horrible by everyday criminals. And now y'all. With that being said, I will cover how emotionally charged I am. I reached out for help to understand what I was seeing in the budget and hoped, surely, all the discrepancies were a mistake. I reached out to a young woman by the name of April, who has spent many hours looking at this with me, helping me understand what I was looking at. She has a background in budgeting and finance. Sadly to say, she saw the same things I did. So emotionally charged is an understatement. We are all painfully aware of what is not in the budget, but thanks to Mayor Wharton's directive to the citizens to come up with a better solution, I am now painfully aware of what is. I'm not going to focus on the fact that Social Security payments are in the pension only division, or that millions of dollars in miscellaneous professional services, whatever that is, or the fact that in more than one area the budget doesn't tie to detail. Although it is, although it is concerning that these items were not questioned by one of you, I mean, surely you spent days going through the details of what was presented to you by an administration before making such a devastated decision that would affect so many lives. Instead, what I will focus on is the amount of debt you, as the City Council, have placed and will continue to place on the backs of city employees and taxpayers. You have blamed your inability to balance the budget on the cost of Memphis City School System, so you got rid of it. Now you're blaming it on the benefits and so you're getting rid of votes. What will be your next excuse to continue the exorbitant spending this administration has grown accustomed to through issuances of general obligation bonds? Just like charging something to a credit card, a credit card with a $65 million a year credit limit while the pension was being underfunded. This administration was drastically exceeding this limit. Like in 2011, when you budgeted issu issuance of 120 million in general bonds, or 60% of the revenue with plans to continue to exceed the limit by 20 million every year for the next five years on investments like the Raleigh Springs Mall, which happens to have an investor who just spent around $1.5 million on roof renovations, has retailers that want to locate there, but now has put everything on hold because this administration wants to invest 20 more, $24 million this year alone to demolish and rebuild. These projects do not provide enough revenue to cover their cost. So it falls on the citizens and the employees' backs to make up the difference. As a result of your spending, you, not the employees, have underfunded our pension, and this year, 33% of every dollar received from property taxes, which is the highest in the city's history, is going to pay on debt. Debt for projects like the pyramid revamp, 
will cost the taxpayers over $16 million this year alone. Not to mention the new payments that are now due as a result of refinancing debt in 2010. Rather than address the problem, then in 2010, the administration chose to wait, just refinance, toss the debt out, extending the payments over longer years. As a result, the property tax revenue going to cover everything else like public safety, benefits, is less than it has been since 2009, when not only we had the Memphis City School expense, but also the overall tax rate was 30 cents less. With more than 10% reduction of property tax dollars going to pay for services provided by the city, how did you balance the budget? Well, it wasn't in the executive this division where Mayor Wharton is adding five new positions. Instead, in addition to stripping our benefits, there will be 237 fewer employees in the police service services when compared to last year's adopted budget. Over $16 million in attrition, in savings. A total contradiction to what Mayor Wharton's statement was, that there would be no cuts to public safety. On top of that, you took an additional $4.7 million for police services and put it directly towards the payment of debt this year. Every budget has trade-offs. You have traded education and now public safety for a debt payments related to bad investments, which you, the City Council, has made. What is the safety of your family worth? Is it worth more than revitalizing the Raleigh Springs Mall or demolishing it? Those are the trade-offs you have made. The city would have us believe that the budget, crisis, the budget crisis is a result of pension and health care expense, not the amount of debt that you have incurred. And yes, it is significant. It is a large part due to the decision that you have made to the year after year underfunded what you were obligated to pay. But what is the opportunity cost of not providing what was promised to those that risk their lives in one of the most dangerous cities in the U.S.? We have already received many resignations with many more to follow not to mention the devastating impact on morale. But as this year's budget reflects, with a planned 237 person reduction just in the police department compared to last year's budget, this mass ex exodus is what I think y'all have intended all along. It is much cheaper than a layoff and it's much better PR. When questioned about the increase of salaries of his appointed positions, Mayor Wharton offered no apologies and said, I quote, you get what you pay for. If only he would apply the same logic to those that risk their lives every day. And I would be happy to tell him that, but he's never here. This administration has tried to pit the citizens against the city employees, stating that the only solution is to raise taxes or reform the benefits, but the budget is nothing more than a shell game. If it wasn't, how could, when the finance director said that the suggested the premium increase of 56% originally, and then proposed that we could reduce it to 24% and have no impact to the budget. With the highest property tax rate in the state and per edge numerous successful pilot programs, you should have enough money, but have used public's lack of interest in your politics to your advantage to drive your own personal agendas. I will give you an out and I will reluctantly believe the administration posed these cuts in a less devastating man manner. And on paper, the number of retirees seemed immaterial. But as you have heard in the council meetings following your decision, that immaterial number represents real people. It represents people who have had catastrophic strokes, who have been killed, who have been shot. These aren't just numbers, they're real people. So my question to you today is, had you known what you know now, would your vote remain the same? If your answer is yes, I hope your political career is cut off, just as you have cut off what you promised to us. If your answer is no, please resend your vote, reinstate our benefits. Let's spend the next year proactively discussing how we can come up with a solution that everybody can live with. Thank you.